Today I'm with Felicity. Felicity, you reached out to me because uh, you wanted to share your sobriety story. How old are you, Felicity? 23 years old. And how long have you been sober now? One year and 31 days. And what are you sober from? Fentanyl and meth. And uh, how did you get started with, with that? A previous relationship. And what caused you or what helped you become sober? Realizing that I was tired of being tired. Some people say I hit rock bottom. Did you hit rock bottom? Yeah, I think it was more than that. There was just like a lot of things that really went left. Okay. So th things happened in your life that you decided this, I'm just sick of it? Yes. Did you go to a detox, a treatment center, or you did it all by yourself? No, I went to detox about seven times. I kept leaving the facilities because I thought I wanted help and I guess I didn't. And so the most recent time I realized it was time to get my life together for my family, for the people that love and care about me. And it took you a total of seven times uh, in treatment. Um, you know, there's, there's people that told me I've been in treatment 20 times, 50 times. Sometimes it takes that long, right? Yes. You think you're ready, but sometimes you're just not. And uh, how are you doing now? Um, I'm doing really good. I'm going to school to become a medical assistant. I make food for the people I love and care about. I stay to myself. Um, I enjoy my time with my family. And uh, when, you, when you watch these videos, um, do they help you in any way? Do they remind you of what life used to be like for you on the streets? Yes, I used to watch these videos and used to think I was going to be the one like on drugs and you recording, but I wasn't. But I want to tell my recovery story. So. And uh, have you ever seen anybody that you were out on the streets with or like somebody you knew out when you're on the streets have you seen them being interviewed yes i have and uh how do you feel when when you see that um do you do you like want to reach out to them and let them know that hey it's possible to defeat this overcome this right yes but i know it's hard at the same time so you just have to let people do it on their own what's the hard part getting clean and staying sober staying away from the people that you once knew and just staying away from where you know you could get it because you could get it from anywhere out here and so you've been sober over a year now how is your sobriety going? Like, is it like a daily thing? I've interviewed people and they've been sober for two years, three years, four years. They're like, you know what, Art? Every day I struggle with it. It's in the back of my mind, but I have to keep busy. I have to stay busy. I have to do something to get my mind off of that, right? I have to avoid triggers. How are you doing with that? Um, I would say I'm doing good. As long as like I'm making food or with my grandmother, that helps me a lot, stay busy and keeping me out of these streets. Okay. Um, what advice do you have for uh, somebody, a 15 year old young Felicity out there, right? She's at home, she's struggling with depression, anxiety, family issues, boyfriend issues. She's trying to, uh, you know, she doesn't know who she is, but you know, her friends, um, kind of say, hey, try this. What should she do? Don't try it. Stop talking to the friends that you have because they're a bad influence in your life. They're really not friends, right? Because your friends shouldn't be giving you poison because at the end of the day, that's really what it is. It's poison and it's going to take your life. It's going to ruin your life. It's not going to do anything positive for your life. So are they really friends? Are they no. really family? The, the people that introduce you to these these uh, these pills are they really don't love you yeah if they did they wouldn't introduce you to this right yeah and um 
Why do you think these pills are so popular with the young crowd? Um, I don't know. I just know, like, if a person sees their self doing it, like, why cannot, like, why can I not do it as well? But some people just can't come out of it. It's like a trap, though. You know, it's like really. Um, it's, I don't know if it's peer pressure or. You know, this stuff is glamorized on TV or music. I'm not sure, but there's just so many young people out here. The youngest I've seen is 13 years old. When you were on the streets, what was the youngest that you were encountering out there? Um, I honestly didn't even ask for people's ages, but some like really looked young, like teenager wise. So okay. it's really not Yeah, good. it's really heartbreaking, right? To see young people that uh, so much potential and, and they can do so much, accomplish so much, but they're not giving themselves an opportunity. It's unfortunate because I've done these interviews and you know, a week later, these folks are no longer with us. They, they've OD'd from these pills. Did that ever happen to you, an OD? Yes, I overdosed like six times at least. Yeah. How were you brought back? By Narcan. On the streets or the ambulance? Um, like at family's houses. So thankfully your family had... Someone was always there to make sure like they called the ambulance or some way some type of help was there. That's scary. Because if they weren't there, if you're by yourself behind an alley somewhere, they wouldn't have found you, right? And yeah. Th that's what some of these folks, it's, it's happening some to Some people them. don't get that chance to relive their life or try to better themselves but you're getting a second opportunity. What are you gonna do with it? Live my best life and do as good as I can and make my dreams come true. Awesome, I think you're off to a great start and you're giving yourself an opportunity. Um, unfortunately, I've been to funerals of folks, you know, 22 year old Gabby, been her funeral and uh, uh, her hopes and dreams are, are gone, but through her life and her testimonial her story right because i interviewed her a few times maybe somebody can learn from that right maybe somebody can learn from your recovery story you're sober and you're trying to live your best life you're going to school and you're doing all the right things unfortunately there's like a little time in between where you're out in the streets you know living a rough life right yeah. but you learn from it because here you are so uh, I think that's very commendable of you to reach out to me. And uh, it was important enough for you to reach out to me and say, hey, I really wanna share my story. Why do you think it's so critical that people hear uh, these sobriety stories? Because you could change someone's life and get them sober. Absolutely. I firmly believe that somebody's gonna watch this at home and say, you know what? I don't, I don't want to have a, ODs, right? I don't want to rely on being brought back from the brink of, you know, death. It, that shouldn't have to happen. Uh, I'm going to live my life and my dreams, you know, continuously without any interruptions from the street or homelessness or addiction, right? So uh, I think your family should be very proud of you. I think you should be very proud of yourself because not a lot of people get to where you are right now. So um, I think it's, it's very a, hard at first, but the more you stay sober, the easier it does get. Each day it gets easier and easier? Yes. Like some people go to, um, what are those, NA or AA meetings? Those really help when you first start out. I just don't do that myself because I feel like I could do it out here, but I do like getting advice to, from other people that were once on drugs. I think everyone has their own way of coping with what and how they um, go about treatment or helping themselves out. Treatment is different for different people, right? Some people need to be locked up for three months, six months, nine months, or a little bit longer to really, really be away from everything, yeah. right? Some people like you, like, you know what? I was just ready. And uh, with the help of family. It took me a long time, three long years, being out on the street, doing the same things, literally just 
family gave up on me, but they didn't because they're still there in a way. But it was tough love. So. There's still hope, right, for people that I'm interviewing. Uh, you know, I've been interviewing people for for years now, and there's still hope for them, right? Yes, I think everyone out there has hope. It's just they need to want it, not because their family wants it, because it will not work. That's a great point. Um, it doesn't matter what the police want, what family wants, the mom wants. It has to be that person that has to decide that they want to live a better life, right? Yes. So, uh, Felicity, I'm going to say thank you very much for reaching out to me, sharing your story. Um, you're going to save somebody's life with this, okay? So, again, you should be proud. Your family should be proud. We're going to stay in contact so you can let me know how your sobriety is going. And, uh, and again, I really appreciate you, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Nice talking to you.